conquest of America by Europeans tragically interrupted the development of the peoples living there. The turbulent and bloody colonial history left many mysteries. One of them, is the legend of the lost Inca land or city of Paititi. During their heyday, the Inca Empire covered a vast territory, which is now occupied by Peru, Bolivia, Ecuador and other countries. The empire achieved significant success in material and spiritual culture, and they created a unique system of control and management. But the Andean peoples were not destined to develop their authentic civilization. In 1532, the army of the Spanish conquistadors entered Cusco, the capital of the Inca Empire. According to legend, some of the Incas fled eastwards to a specific place called Paititi, hidden in a tropical forest. There they supposedly remained to live away from the invaders while preserving their culture and part of their wealth. The Paititi research team was created in 2017, thanks to two enthusiasts, Yaroslav from Russia and Cheslev from Switzerland. Bit by bit, they collected gigabytes of data on Paititi and applied geospatial technologies to analyze them. Satellite images, maps, digital terrain models, expedition reports, legends and original archival documents were merged into their geo-information system. This allowed a detailed study of the territory associated with Paititi. For example, Paititi research team analyzed the relationship between landforms and tens of thousands of small modern settlements in the Andes. This information helped to identify zones in the still unexplored territory that were potentially suitable for habitation in the past. In total, they identified six possible candidates for Paititi, located in a nearly uninhabited territory of the modern Cusco region in Peru. Finally, after much research on the computer and books, the Paititi research team went to the heart of the Inca land in the summer of 2019. The purpose of the expedition was to prepare a base for further research, to refine the Paititi research geo-information model, and to build relationships with local communities and researchers. The expedition consisted of exploring two different areas 100 kilometers apart. The first area probably served as a key location on the way from Cusco to Paititi. On a satellite image of this mountainous terrain, the team found some terraces that looked like human-made. The path to this place ran through the village of Chocacancha. There our researchers established connection with Don Paulino Quispe Veronica. He is the head of the village and he became not only an excellent guide but also a valuable source of information. Don Paulino took the team to the surrounding mountains, famous for the numerous buildings created during the Inca era. From Choquecancha they were led by an excellent wide road, which had been built before the conquest of America. Throughout their history, the Incas developed a network of numerous cobbled roads, laid over thousands of kilometers. One could only envy how easy, despite his age, Don Paulino was overcoming steep climbs. At about 3,500 meters above sea level the team saw the magnificent ruins, unofficially named as Marcha Wasi. There, thanks to Don Paulino, among the rubbles, they found a tunnel, possibly used for escape in case of danger. Without special equipment it is very dangerous to crawl into. The tunnel supposedly goes four kilometers north towards the archaeological site of Manto. Manto is famous for its rupestrian paintings of animals that, according to one theory, point to Paititi. 
the further way was harder, as it passed along barely distinguishable paths. Don Paulino had to return to the village, but he left his nephew Armando to help. Together with Armando, the team reached the goal, a group of terraces located a few kilometers from the ruins of Marcha Wasi. Satellite imagery gives a detailed picture of an area but only on the ground can one verify what is visible from space. It turned out that this is an artificially created landscape, and only a few farmers living around know about it. There are foundations of stone buildings that were used presumably for agriculture. The team also found several tombs, which according to Armando, had long been looted. This area probably served as a meeting point for folks living in the western mountains and in the eastern selva. It could be one of the crucial spots on the way to the land of Paititi. The team outlined new points on the map and added details to their puzzle. This information would be analyzed after they return home. Now there was no less difficult way back. Geographic information systems and satellite images are of great help in searching for Paititi. But only when interacting with locals, with respect for their culture, can one count on the result. In the second expedition area it was needed to reach one of Paititi possible locations, identified with satellite imagery. A challenging test awaited the team, and this time without local guides. Cheslev and Yaroslav set off from the city of Cusco with their Peruvian teammate, Saul, on his off-road car. And after a six-hour drive, they reached the valley of the magnificent Yavero River. This river flows along the eastern frontier of the former Inca state, Beyond it lies the land where our researchers dared to find Paititi. Saying goodbye to Saul, Cheslev and Yaroslav crossed the bridge and set foot on this poorly explored area. At these heights, about 1,200 meters above sea level, it was very hot, unlike the previous expedition area. It was hard for them on the way to the goal. They were tired of sweat, insect bites, and the load of their backpacks. Even setting up camp for the night was not an easy task. Walking along the steep river bank all day, it was impossible to find a single spot where a tent could fit. But they did not go blindly. The prepared terrain maps made it possible to find suitable places and paths, evaluate the steepness of the slopes and find sources of drinking water. The Andean night sky, with its southern constellations unusual for Europeans, was helping briefly forget the severity of the day. One of the researchers stepped on this species. A well-made first aid kit and other prepared tools also allowed them to cope with many troubles. But, unfortunately, due to physical toughness, our team could not reach the target point where they wanted to check suspicious structures visible on satellite images. Soberly assessing the situation, they turned back ahead of time. By satellite phone, they barely managed, due to the absent signal, to call their driver Saul ahead of schedule and set off to the meeting point. When he took Cheslev and Yaroslav back, they were under great impression of the mighty Andes. How many secrets do they still keep? Although they failed to achieve the goal in the second expedition area, the team was still able to test the equipment and their capabilities under rough conditions. They drew conclusions about the effectiveness of the cartographic materials they created, and about organizing a more complex ground expedition. Enriched by many impressions and collected data. After the expedition, they again sat down at computers, to process the gathered information, 
and analyze new high-resolution satellite images. As a result, out of six previous PITETA candidates, one was chosen, on which they will focus all further efforts. Stay updated about the research on the project website, pytetia.info.